The Boeing X-32 concept demonstrator plane was created for the Joint Strike Fighter competition. It was defeated by the Lockheed Martin X-35 demonstrator, which went on to become the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Future Warplanes, where we tell you about military fighter jets, military drones, and military planes from the currently famous in the air to the most advanced around the world. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's begin. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency initiated the Common Affordable Lightweight Fighter Project in 1993. The goal of the project was to create a stealth-enabled design that would replace all of the United States Department of Defense's lighter weight fighter and attack aircraft, such as the F-16 Fighting Falcon, McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, and vertical short takeoff vertical landing AV-8B Harrier II. In 1994, the two programs were merged by Congress into the Joint Strike Fighter Program. Many companies participated in the first phase of this project, which involved developing concept aircraft designs for submission to the Department of Defense. On November 16, 1996, Boeing and Lockheed Martin were awarded contracts to produce two concept demonstrator aircraft each. According to the contract, these fighters had to demonstrate conventional takeoff and landing, carrier takeoff and landing, and short takeoff and vertical landing. They were also expected to include ground demonstrations of systems from a production representative aircraft, such as the preferred weapon system concept. The prohibition on companies using their own money to fund development was a significant departure from previous projects. Each received $750 million to develop their two aircraft, which included avionics, software, and hardware. This restriction encouraged the use of low-cost manufacturing and assembly techniques, while also preventing either Boeing or Lockheed Martin from going bankrupt in order to win such a significant competition. Developing the X-32 Boeing's competitive advantage strategy was to offer significantly lower manufacturing and life cycle costs by minimizing variations between the various JSF versions. As a result, the X-32 was built around a large one-piece carbon fiber composite delta wing. The wing had a span of 9.15 meters, a leading edge sweep of 55 degrees, and a fuel capacity of 20,000 pounds. The high sweep angle was designed to allow for the use of a thick wing section while still providing limited transonic aerodynamic drag, as well as to provide a good angle for wing-installed conformal antenna equipment. The wing would be difficult to create. Because of the cost-cutting strategy, Boeing chose a direct-lift thrust vectoring system for the Marine's short takeoff and vertical landing requirement, which only required the addition of a thrust vectoring module around the main engine. However, in order to achieve a neutral attitude hover, the engine had to be mounted directly behind the cockpit, which shifted the center of gravity forward from its usual position in jet fighters toward the rear of the plane. In the 1960s, Boeing proposed a similar supersonic fighter with a mid-center of gravity mounted engine and vectored thrust nozzles, but it never progressed beyond images published in Aviation Week. In comparison, the Lockheed entry appeared to be a scaled-down version of the F-22 Raptor stealth fighter. The X-32 was dubbed the Monica by Boeing employees. Another consequence of the direct lift system selection was the large chin-mounted air intake. This was necessary to provide enough air to the main engine to provide the thrust required to hover during the zero horizontal velocity phase when it couldn't use ram air pressure. The potential direct visibility of the compressor blades to radar was a side effect of this large intake, see radar cross-section. Variable baffles designed to block incoming radio waves without impairing airflow were one option for mitigation. Design Modifications The Delta Wing design was used on both X-32 aircraft. However, eight months into the construction of the concept demonstrator aircraft, the Navy requested that the JSF's maneuverability and payload requirements be refined, and Boeing's Delta Wing design fell short of the new targets. Engineers changed the aircraft design to a conventional canted twin tail which reduced weight and improved agility, but it was too late. They were deemed adequate for demonstrating Boeing's technology. Flight Tests Because of the X-32's heavy delta wing design, Boeing demonstrated STOVL and supersonic flight in separate configurations, and the STOVL configuration necessitating the removal of some parts of the fighter. The company promised that their conventional tail design would not necessitate separate configurations for production models. The Lockheed Martin X-35 concept demonstrator aircraft, on the other hand, 
could switch between SDOVL and supersonic configurations in mid-flight. The X-32A, designed for CTOL and carrier trials, took its first flight on September 18, 2000, from Boeing's Palmdale plant to Edwards Air Force Base. At around 8 a.m., the aircraft, piloted by Boeing test pilot Fred Knox, took 2,200 feet of runway before taking off at 150 knots. A minor hydraulic leak was discovered shortly after takeoff, and the flight was cut from 30 to 40 minutes to 20 minutes. The F-A-18 chase plane needed a lot of afterburners to keep up with the X-32 in the early stages, according to Knox. During the flight, the aircraft reached a height of 10,000 feet, a speed of 200 knots, and an attack angle of 13 degrees. Despite the shorter flight, approximately 80% of the planned test points were completed. It was powered by the F-119PW614C, a conventional derivative of the F-22 afterburning turbofan. The X-32B STOVL version took to the skies for the first time on March 19, 2001. The flight from Palmdale to Edwards AFB lasted 50 minutes, and it was originally scheduled for the third quarter of 2000. The STOVL aircraft were powered by a modified version of the 614C engine known as the F-119PW614S. In normal flight, the 614S was configured as a conventional afterburning turbofan. In the STOVL mode, however, a butterfly valve diverted the core stream exhaust gases to a pair of thrust vectoring nozzles near the aircraft's center of gravity. A jet screen nozzle provided a sheet of cool bypass air ahead of these nozzles to reduce hot gas recirculation. A pair of ducts connected to roll nozzles near the wing tips. The aft pitch yaw nozzles and the forward pitch nozzles were fed by two pairs of ducts. The afterburner was turned off and there was no gas flow during lift. The X-32B achieved STOVL flight in the same way that the AV-8B Harrier II did by vectoring the jet exhaust thrust. Maintaining a constant engine match, aided by the control system algorithm maintaining a fixed total nozzle effective area, resulted in a smooth transition between STOVL and normal modes. As a result, the engine was unaware that various nozzles were being opened and closed to complete the transition. Why the F-32 didn't join the U.S. Air Force military? In retrospect, it's difficult to say whether the DOD made the right decision. From rampant budget concerns to the implicit technical challenges of implementing cutting-edge technologies like sensor fusion, Boeing is likely to have run into problems similar to those that have plagued the F-35 program for the past decade. So why wasn't the X-32 included? For one thing, its direct lift system was prone to pop stalls or severe engine malfunctions caused by hot air being ingested. The government also expressed doubts about the X-32's engine's ability to support its reported maximum takeoff weight of 50,000 pounds. Worse, eight months into the competition, the Navy requested that the JSF's aerodynamic requirements be revised. Although Boeing engineers were able to make some minor changes to the tail, it was too late to redesign the Delta Wing to fully comply with the new JSF guidelines. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your family and friends. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comments space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.